Dead America, Tales of the First Month, Atticus, Day Zero Plus One. The morning sun had just begun to filter through the trees, casting long shadows over the campsite. Susie's eyes fluttered open as she lay in her tent, listening to the gentle rustling of leaves outside. She stretched her limbs, feeling excitement bubble up inside her at the thought of spending another day outdoors with her dad. Crawling out from the warmth of her sleeping bag, she unzipped the tent and stepped into the cool morning air. Morning, Daddy, she called softly as her eyes found Atticus by the fire, his tall frame silhouetted against the dancing flames. He looked up and tipped his cowboy hat back, a warm smile spreading across his face. Good morning, sweetheart. His deep voice rumbled like distant thunder. Did you sleep well? Uh-huh, Susie beamed, nodding enthusiastically. I can't wait to go on the pond today. Me neither, kiddo, Atticus replied, stoking the fire and pulling out some camping cookware. We'll have ourselves a nice breakfast first, though. How do eggs and bacon sound? Yummy. Susie clapped her hands together and watched as her father expertly cracked eggs onto a cast iron skillet. The smell of sizzling bacon soon filled the air, making her stomach rumble with anticipation. As they spoke about their plans for the day, a sudden rustling sound caught Atticus's attention. He tensed, one hand instinctively reaching for the six-shooter at his hip. Emerging from a small path in the woods was a young woman with dark hair, her face etched with panic. Atticus recognized her as Evelyn, one of the college students camping across the pond. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, she stammered her chest heaving with each breath. I'm freaking out and I didn't know what else to do. Easy now, Atticus said, his tone calm but firm. Take a deep breath and tell us what's going on. He glanced at Susie, giving her a reassuring nod. Evelyn exhaled slowly, trying to steady herself. My friends, they're really sick. They won't wake up. Our cell phones aren't working and I need help. All right, Atticus agreed, the concern in his eyes matching Evelyn's. We'll figure this out together. Just stay calm and stick with us. As Susie watched the interaction between her father and Evelyn, she couldn't help but feel the excitement from earlier drain away, replaced by a gnawing sense of unease. The woods no longer seemed like a welcoming sanctuary, but rather an ominous labyrinth that held unknown dangers. She clutched her father's hand tightly, drawing comfort from his unwavering strength and determination. Evelyn's eyes darted back and forth, fear evident in their depths. We hiked in a few days ago, she explained, her voice shaky. My friends Lenny, Nathan, and Carol were all from the college just up the road. We thought camping would be a nice break before our final project. She hesitated, swallowing hard. But the guys, they got really sick. I thought they'd sleep it off, but this morning they're unresponsive. Unresponsive, Atticus echoed, his brow furrowing as he processed the information. He eyed Evelyn skeptically trying to discern if she was being genuine or attempting to deceive him for some unknown reason. Please, Evelyn pleaded, desperation creeping into her tone. Our cell phones aren't working. Can you try yours? We need help. Atticus hesitated, then pulled out his phone, hitting the power button. To his dismay, there was no signal. His gut churned, suspicion and unease mingling inside him. Looks like mine's not working either, he admitted reluctantly. But if your friends are in bad shape, we can't just leave them out there. I'll drive you all to get some help. Thank you, Evelyn breathed, relief washing over her face. I don't know what I would have done without you. Stay close, Atticus instructed, his authoritative tone brooking no argument. He reached down for his gun, making sure it was secure at his hip. Susie's small hand trembled in his own as they followed Evelyn through the dense foliage toward her campsite. As they hiked, Atticus couldn't shake the nagging feeling that something was very wrong. The woods around them seemed to close in, pressing down with an ominous weight that set his senses on high alert. Why the hell ain't the phones working, he wondered, his thoughts churning. And what's wrong with those boys? Daddy, Susie whispered, her eyes wide and fearful. I'm scared. Me too, darling, he admitted quietly, squeezing her hand reassuringly. But we'll figure this out, I promise. The trek through the woods felt endless, each rustle of leaves or snap of a twig magnifying the tension that hung in the air. Atticus focused on the path ahead, determined to protect his daughter and Evelyn from whatever danger lurked within the shadows. Almost there, Evelyn murmured, 
her voice barely audible above the sounds of the forest. The campsite loomed just beyond their line of sight, veiled by the thick underbrush. Stay close, Susie, Atticus repeated, his grip on her hand tightening as they pressed forward, bracing themselves for the unknown horrors that awaited them. Evelyn's breaths were short and rapid as she picked her way through the undergrowth, her eyes darting back and forth between Atticus and Susie. I'm studying journalism at the local college, she began, her voice wavering slightly. I always wanted to be a reporter, letting people know about the ills of the world. I'm starting to rethink that career choice. Don't let one scary morning deter you, girl, Atticus said, keeping his voice calm, though he could feel that same sense of dread growing within him. I'll, I'll try to keep that in mind, Evelyn stammered, locking eyes with Susie for a moment, desperate for something to distract her from the unrelenting fear. Her gaze softened, and she smiled reassuringly at the young girl. What about you, Susie? What do you like to do for fun? Um, Susie hesitated, her lips quivering as she tried to find her voice. I like drawing, I guess. Drawing? That's wonderful, Evelyn said, her enthusiasm genuine as she continued to engage the girl. What kind of things do you draw? Animals, mostly, Susie replied, her fear momentarily forgotten as she thought about her art. I love drawing horses. Wow, horses can be really difficult to draw. You must be very talented, Evelyn praised. Atticus couldn't help but feel a surge of gratitude toward Evelyn for helping Susie feel more at ease. But as they drew closer to the campsite, the eerie silence of the woods seemed to tighten its grip on them, stifling any further conversation. Then it happened. A blood-curdling scream tore through the stillness. Instantly, Atticus's heart hammered in his chest, and he shoved past the two girls, positioning himself between them and the source of the chilling sound. Evelyn, protect Susie, he ordered, his voice steady despite the growing terror gnawing at his insides. Okay, Evelyn whispered, pulling Susie closer, her eyes wide with fear. Atticus burst through the tree line his gaze immediately drawn to the grisly scene before him. One of the sick men, his skin mottled in gray, had reanimated into a monstrous form, teeth sinking deep into the neck of the young woman, who now writhed in agony on the forest floor. What in God's name? Atticus thought, his mind racing as he tried to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before his eyes. The grotesque figure turned its head, blood dripping from its mouth, and locked its glazed, lifeless eyes on Atticus. It let out an excited moan and charged toward him. Stay back, Atticus shouted, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he braced himself for the impending confrontation. But even as the words left his lips, he knew they would do little to deter the monstrous creature bearing down upon him. The snarling zombie lunged at Atticus, arms outstretched, fingers clawing at the air. With instincts honed from years of dangerous encounters as a Texas ranger, Atticus sidestepped the creature's initial attack. The force of the lunge brought the zombie stumbling past him, but it quickly recovered and turned to face its prey once more. Stay away from me, Atticus yelled, his voice a mix of fury and fear. He fumbled for his six-shooter, cursing himself for not having it at the ready. As he pulled the gun free, the zombie lunged again, slamming into him with surprising strength. The gun flew from his hand, landing somewhere in the underbrush. Damn it. Atticus muttered through gritted teeth as he fought to keep the snapping jaws of the creature at bay. Memories of countless bar brawls flashed through his mind, reminding him of one crucial lesson. Never give up the fight. With renewed determination, he managed to shove the creature off of him, taking advantage of the brief respite to reach for the knife tucked in his boot. Gotcha now, he panted, clutching the knife tightly in his hand. The zombie, undeterred by the setback, prepared to launch itself at him once more. But this time, Atticus was ready. As the creature leaped forward, he plunged the knife deep into its skull. It fell to the ground, twitching and convulsing before finally going still, panting heavily. Atticus scanned the area, searching for the gun that had been knocked from his grasp. Instead, his eyes fell upon the tent where the other sick man lay. At the sound of the struggle, the tent began to shake violently as the now undead occupant tried to break free. Of course, Atticus whispered, frustration lacing his words. He glanced around, spotting his gun half buried in the foliage a few feet away. Snatching it up, he aimed at the thrashing tent, fingers tense on the trigger. Should I shoot? He wondered, 
a cold sweat breaking out on his brow. The thought of killing another human being, even one so horribly transformed, weighed heavily on him. But as the seconds ticked by, and the trapped zombie continued its futile struggle, Atticus realized he didn't need to make that decision just yet. Stay put, he muttered to the monster, eyes never leaving the tent. Behind him, Susie's muffled sobs reached his ears, reminding him of the innocent lives at stake. With a deep breath, he steeled himself for whatever horrors lay ahead, vowing to protect those who couldn't protect themselves, no matter the cost. Lord, help us all, he whispered, already anticipating the next nightmare they'd face. Evelyn emerged from the woods, her face pale and eyes wide with fear. She positioned herself protectively in front of Susie, casting a wary glance at the still flailing tent. The sight of her friend's lifeless body lying nearby spurred her into action. Taking a shaky step forward, she reached out towards the fallen girl. Wait, Atticus warned sharply, grabbing Evelyn's arm and halting her movement. His grip was firm, but not unkind. There's nothing you can do for her now. Evelyn hesitated, torn between the desire to help and the dread of facing whatever had just happened. Her gaze flicked from her friend to the crumpled form of the man Atticus had killed. It wasn't human anymore, that much was clear. But what was it? Atticus, what's going on? She asked, unable to mask the quiver in her voice. What are these things? He knelt next to the fallen creature examining its grotesque features. I don't know for sure, he admitted, his brow furrowed in thought. Looks like some kind of virus, turns people into monsters. He shook his head, unable to grasp the reality of the situation. What would do this to people? Susie whispered, clutching Evelyn's hand as they stood together watching Atticus work. Her small fingers trembled in Evelyn's grip. I don't know, Atticus replied, standing up and wiping his hands on his jeans. It's not important, though. What is important is that we need to figure out our next move. Get somewhere safe. As if summoned by their fears, the bitten woman began to twitch and convulse on the ground. Her once vibrant blue eyes glazed over, replaced by an unnerving milky white. A guttural moan escaped her lips as she struggled to rise. Susie, don't look, Evelyn exclaimed, covering the girl's eyes with her free hand. Both of them trembled as the newly awakened zombie took a moment to find its bearings before lunging towards them. Get back, Atticus barked, raising his gun and firing a single shot. The bullet tore through the creature's chest, but it barely slowed its advance. Panic surged through him as he realized that he'd missed the critical mark. He had only one more chance. Let's see if you like a headshot, he said under his breath, squeezing the trigger once more. This time, the bullet found its mark, embedding itself in the monster's head. It dropped to the ground, lifeless once more. Is, is it over? Susie whispered, her voice shaking as she peeked out from behind Evelyn's protective embrace. For now, Atticus answered, holstering his weapon. But we gotta move. We ain't safe here no more. Evelyn's chest heaved, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. She stared at the motionless body of her former friend a gut-wrenching mix of grief and terror washing over her. Hey, Atticus said gently, placing a firm hand on her shoulder. We gotta focus. We can't stay here in the open. Evelyn swallowed hard and nodded, her gaze drifting to Susie, who clung to her side. The young girl's eyes were wide and filled with fear, and Evelyn felt a sudden surge of protectiveness. You're right, she whispered, wiping away her tears. What do we do now? First. We need to get back to my truck and out of these woods, Atticus stated, his voice steady and determined. Then we'll figure out our next move. He glanced around cautiously, his ears straining for any sounds that might signal approaching danger. As they retraced their steps through the woods, distant screams pierced the air, sending chills down their spines. Susie whimpered, clinging even tighter to Evelyn's hand. Stay close, both of you, Atticus instructed, his grip tightening around his gun. They reached the campsite and hurriedly packed up what they could, food, water, and a few essential supplies, before throwing everything into the back of the truck. Damn it, Atticus muttered under his breath. Out of the corner of his eye, he spotted two figures stumbling out of the woods near the pond. Their grotesque moans confirmed the worst. More zombies, drawn by the noise. Everybody in now, he barked, 
ushering Evelyn and Susie into the truck. His heart pounded in his chest, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he slid into the driver's seat and slammed his foot down on the gas. As they sped away, Atticus couldn't help but feel a sense of dread creeping up on him. What in the hell was going on? What were those things, and how could he protect Susie and Evelyn from them? Are we going to be okay? Susie asked in a small voice, her eyes searching Atticus's face for reassurance. Yep, we're going to be just fine, baby girl, he said with forced confidence, his knuckles white as he gripped the wheel. But deep down, he knew their ordeal was far from over. And as the screams faded into the distance, he couldn't shake the feeling that the worst was yet to come. Atticus pressed the gas pedal, gravel crunching beneath the truck's tires as they raced through the woods. He gripped the wheel with white-knuckled determination, his cowboy hat casting a shadow over his furrowed brow. The path ahead was narrow and treacherous, but he kept his focus, unwilling to let anything catch them off guard. Keep your eyes closed, Susie, Evelyn instructed gently, her hands covering the young girl's face. She stared out the window herself, her heart pounding in her chest as she watched vague figures dart between the trees. Were they human, or were they something else? Where are we going, Daddy? Susie asked, her voice trembling ever so slightly. Somewhere safe, he replied, though he wasn't entirely sure where that would be. The dense forest around them seemed to close in, swallowing the truck whole. As they reached the main road, Atticus allowed himself a moment of relief. They were out of the woods for now, but their situation hadn't improved much. The road stretched out before them, empty and desolate, a testament to the chaos unfolding in the world beyond. Which way? Evelyn questioned, her gaze locked on the crossroads. Let me think. Atticus hesitated, weighing his options. He needed more information, something to guide their next move. Turning on the radio, he searched for any news about what was happening. Chaos in the streets. No sign of authorities. Avoid populated areas. The panicked voice crackling through the speakers only confirmed their fears. Something terrible had happened, and it was spreading fast. Damn it, Atticus muttered, his jaw clenched in frustration. They couldn't risk driving into the heart of the chaos. But staying put wasn't an option either. Take a deep breath, Susie. We'll figure this out, Evelyn whispered, her own voice unsteady. She squeezed the girl's shoulder reassuringly, though she couldn't dispel her own dread. All right, Atticus said firmly, making a decision. We'll head away from town, find somewhere we can hole up and stay safe. We've got supplies and we've got each other. That's what matters. He chose a direction, steering the truck onto an unfamiliar road. As they drove further from the chaos behind them, the eerie silence of the deserted highway seemed to echo the uncertainty within their hearts. Whatever this is, Atticus thought, his hands gripping the wheel tighter. We'll face it together. As Atticus turned the truck down a narrow, winding road, the voice on the radio grew more panicked. The horror in the announcer's voice was palpable, and it sent shivers down Atticus's spine. We don't know where they're coming from or what's causing it, but please, if you can, stay inside and lock your doors. Do not approach anyone exhibiting violent behavior. I repeat, do not. A sudden scuffle erupted inside the radio booth, followed by a blood-curdling scream. Evelyn's hand shot out to switch off the radio, her face pale. We don't need that right now, she murmured, her eyes flicking to Susie, who stared wide-eyed at the silent speakers. All right, let's focus on finding a safe place for us. Atticus said, trying to maintain a calm composure despite his racing heart. He scanned the dense forest flanking either side of the road, searching for some refuge from the chaos unfolding around them. Should we head to town? Susie asked, her voice trembling. Maybe there are more people there who can help. Town's not an option, Atticus replied, his tone firm. We've got no idea how far this thing has spread. We need somewhere remote, away from all this. Like where? Evelyn questioned her gaze shifting between the trees, searching for any sign of life or worse, the undead. Like, Atticus trailed off as he spotted a weathered sign through the windshield. It advertised remote cabins, but a hastily hung banner declared them closed. A surge of hope filled him. There, those cabins could be our best bet. Are you sure? Evelyn asked, her brow furrowed with concern. What if someone else had the same idea? Then we'll deal with it, Atticus said his determination unwavering. But right now, it's our best shot at finding shelter. 
He steered the truck off the road and onto a bumpy dirt path leading toward the cabins. The heavy silence in the vehicle was punctuated by the crunch of gravel beneath their tires and the creaking of branches overhead. As they drove deeper into the woods, Atticus couldn't help but feel a growing sense of unease. Keep an eye out for anything unusual, he cautioned the others, gripping the steering wheel tighter. We don't know what we might find up ahead. Got it, Evelyn replied, her eyes scanning the forest intently. Susie nodded her agreement, her small hands clenched in her lap. The turnoff appeared abruptly, a narrow gap between trees that seemed to swallow the truck as they entered. The dirt road was uneven and marred by deep tire tracks, evidence of recent construction efforts. Atticus's grip on the steering wheel tightened, his knuckles turning white as he navigated the rough terrain. Evelyn and Susie exchanged worried glances in the back seat, their previous conversation forgotten. Stay alert, Atticus said, his voice low and tense. We don't know what we're walking into here. A hundred yards before the cabins, Atticus spotted an abandoned construction truck, its door hanging open like a gaping wound. A cooler sat in the back, sweating in the sunlight. He pulled over, his eyes darting between the truck and the tree line. Stay in the truck, he ordered, not wanting to expose the girls to any unnecessary danger. He stepped out, cowboy hat shading his face as he approached the deserted vehicle. His heart pounded in his ears, each beat echoing the uncertainty that gnawed at him. Be careful, Evelyn called from the safety of the truck, her voice tight with worry. Susie nodded silently, her eyes wide and fixed on her father. With caution, Atticus reached for the cooler, lifting it from the bed of the truck without disturbing anything else. As he turned back toward the truck, he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. He hurriedly placed the cooler inside before climbing back behind the wheel. Let's get to those cabins, he said, his voice betraying a hint of urgency. As they drove up to the cabins, there was no sign of life, neither human nor undead. Atticus parked the truck, once again instructing the girls to stay put while he did a sweep of the area. Handgun drawn, he moved with purpose, his senses heightened and every muscle coiled. Only one cabin remained intact, the others reduced to piles of timber and shattered glass. Atticus approached the door, his finger resting lightly on the trigger. A sudden rustle from behind sent adrenaline coursing through him, and he spun around just in time to see two zombies lurching toward him at a breakneck pace. Damn it, he muttered under his breath, anger and frustration fueling his resolve. He raised the gun, his aim steady despite the pounding of his heart. Stay back, he shouted to the girls, though he knew they couldn't hear him. I can handle this. As the grotesque figures drew closer, their snarls filling the air. A part of Atticus questioned whether he could handle this new world. But another, deeper part roared back, unwilling to let fear extinguish the fire that had always burned within him. Come on, you bastards, he whispered, steeling himself for the battle ahead. The air around Atticus grew thick with the stench of decay as he fired off rapid shots from his six-shooter. The first zombie staggered under the hail of bullets before a final round pierced its skull dropping it to the ground. Damn, Atticus muttered, realizing he was out of ammunition just as the second creature bore down on him. Evelyn's heartbeat thundered in her chest as she watched from the truck, gripping Susie's hand tightly. She couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the imposing man fighting for their survival. With no time to reload, Atticus pulled a hunting knife from his boot and braced for impact. The zombie lunged, and he met it with the full force of his shoulder driving the blade into its putrid flesh. The creature screeched and clawed at him, but he held on, wrestling it to the ground. Come on, you son of a bitch, he grunted through clenched teeth, twisting the knife deeper into the monster's head. It let out one last gurgled cry before going limp beneath him. Stay with me, Susie, Evelyn whispered, trying to keep her own terror in check. Your daddy's gonna be okay. Atticus rose, covered in gore, and wiped sweat from his brow. He knew more would come if they lingered. Striding back to the truck, he grabbed the cooler and beckoned the girls out. Let's move, he ordered, his voice tight with determination. Is it over? Susie asked, her eyes wide with fear. Stay close to me, was all he said in response. They followed him into the cabin where Atticus wasted no time securing every door and window, drawing the curtains closed to block any prying eyes. Check around for anything useful, he told Evelyn who nodded and began rummaging through the cabin's sparse furnishings. In a dusty corner, she found a battery-powered radio, 
and held it up with a small, triumphant smile. Good find, Atticus said, his expression briefly softening. Now we just need to figure out what's going on out there. Evelyn's fingers trembled as she fiddled with the radio dials, the weight of their situation sinking in. Static filled the cabin like a thick fog, and her heart sank with every passing moment. Nothing, she muttered, frustration evident in her voice. Just dead air. Atticus stood by the window, his eyes scanning the tree line. The cowboy hat cast a shadow over his face, hiding any trace of emotion. He caught sight of movement several hundred yards away, zombies drawn to some unseen commotion in the woods. They stumbled past the cabin, but Atticus held his breath, waiting for them to disappear from view. Looks like we're safe for now, he said, his voice steady despite the pounding of his heart. We got enough food to last us a couple of weeks. We'll stay put until things calm down out there. Thank you, Evelyn whispered, her gaze never leaving his. You saved my life. I can't even begin to. It's my pleasure, Evelyn, Atticus interrupted, his tone firm. But we need to stay vigilant. I have this sinking feeling like this is just getting started. He glanced at his daughter, who was sitting on the floor, hugging her knees to her chest. She looked so small and vulnerable in this terrifying new world. Evelyn followed his gaze and seemed to understand what needed to be done. Turning away from him, she searched the cabin for any source of comfort. Her eyes fell on a dusty shelf where a deck of cards lay forgotten. Snatching them up, she sat down beside Susie, her voice soft and soothing. Hey, Susie, she coaxed. Why don't we play a card game? It'll help pass the time and it might take our minds off things for a little while. Susie hesitated, looking up at her father for reassurance. Sensing her need for some semblance of normalcy, Atticus nodded in approval. The weight of responsibility weighed heavily on his shoulders, knowing that the safety of these two girls was now in his hands. Go ahead, Susie, he said, his voice gentle but firm. I'll be right here, keeping watch. As Evelyn shuffled the cards and began teaching Susie a simple game, Atticus returned to the window, his eyes never straying from the tree line. He knew they couldn't stay in this cabin forever. Sooner or later, they'd have to face the horrors outside. But for now, all that mattered was protecting the ones who depended on him, whatever it took. He clenched his jaw, determination burning in his eyes. Whatever was waiting for them out there, he'd be ready. As the sound of shuffled cards and Susie's soft laughter filled the cabin, Atticus turned his gaze to the dense woods beyond the window. The shadows cast by the trees seemed to dance menacingly taunting him with their secrets. He couldn't shake the feeling that danger loomed just out of sight, ready to strike at any moment. Atticus, Evelyn called from behind him, her voice tinged with concern. We're going to be okay, right? He glanced back at her, meeting her searching eyes for a brief moment before returning his focus on the tree line. For now, yes. But we can't afford to let our guard down. He could hear the fear in Susie's voice as she asked, Daddy, what are those things? Why are they trying to hurt us? Atticus hesitated, unsure how to explain the horrors they'd witnessed to his innocent daughter. Finally, he settled on the truth, or as much of it as he could understand. I don't know yet, sweetheart, but I promise I'll do everything in my power to protect you and Evelyn. The weight of his words hung heavy in the air, a tangible reminder of the responsibility he now carried. He knew there was no going back. No way to return to the life they'd known before. The world had changed irrevocably, and they were trapped in the midst of the chaos. His thoughts shifted to their supplies, which he had carefully stashed away in a corner. They had enough food and water to last them a couple of weeks, but what then? What if help didn't arrive? What if this nightmare continued indefinitely? He pushed those thoughts aside, focusing instead on the immediate challenge at hand, keeping the girls safe and alive. They were all in this together, and he couldn't afford to lose hope or let doubt consume him. As they resumed their card game, Atticus continued to scan the perimeter, his hand never straying far from the grip of his six-shooter. Uncertainty gnawed at him, but he refused to give in to fear. He was a cowboy in a modern world, a brawler who faced danger head-on, and with every fiber of his being he vowed to stand firm against the darkness that threatened to engulf them all. Hours passed and the sun dipped lower in the sky, casting long shadows on the ground as it sank beneath the horizon. 
The approaching night only served to amplify the sense of foreboding that had settled over the cabin. As the last light faded, Atticus remained vigilant, his eyes fixed on the tree line, ready to face whatever horrors the next hours and days might bring.